The following program are not necessarily those of this station or its sponsors. Warning. This program contains strong adult language, violence, and brief nudity. It's everything you're looking for. Live from the Sims Tower West in the Jim Robinson Toyota Studios, we are AM 1600 WKKX. From AM 1600 WKKX, the Valley's new watchdog, it's time once again for George Kellis, brought to you today by Coors and Coors Light. Welcome you to this uh, Monday, September the 29th, 2008 edition of George Kellis, brought to you by Coors Light. George, along with Todd Jeffers, Dougie Boyd, and uh, Ewan's headline on the Fox News website, Now What? House rejects $700 billion bailout, Wall Street sinks. The market down as far as 705 points today. Last time I glanced at the monitor over here, it was down 548 points. It's now 583. 583. 583. I refer to my dad often on this program. and uh, Let me just tell you a little story. There are a lot of people out, out there listening that, that, that knew my dad. He was a, a family physician, and uh, he treated people for allergies, and uh, he was director of family practice at uh, Wheeling Hospital, and... Um, he was the medical director at the hospital, at Wheeling Hospital, for a period of years. Um, my dad was a unique, unique individual. He he was one of the two smartest people I ever knew. The other one is the guy that owns this radio station. They're the two smartest people I've ever known. I'll tell you a little story about my dad before we get into the show today. He's been gone now for more than 16 years. Son of Greek immigrants, parents spoke no English when they came here in the 19-teens. Uh, he was uh, born here um, in 1917, just after they, they had come here. Um, he, he went through all, all of it, you name it. Uh, polio as a child. Um, his formative years were during the Depression. He was called to service in World War II, at which uh, time he was stricken with a physically crippling disease. Uh, during a service which uh, meant that he had to walk with a cane for the rest of his life. He was all of about 5 feet 9, 140 pounds. Uh, there, physically, there wasn't much left of the poor guy um, after uh, he had been ravaged by all these other things. But he had an incredible mind. Um, and, and not a day goes by where I don't think about him. The wisdom... The open-mindedness, the long-term thinking, the, the things that he taught me. Never underestimate an opponent. Be open-minded. Um, uh, you know, Never think short-term about anything. Never put all your eggs in one basket is one of his favorite slogans. So there he was, and, I, and, and I'll never forget four or five different times him telling me, George, I was 12 years old when the market crashed. Don't think for a minute that you won't see this happen at some point in your life. And, you know, I mean, I never forgot what he said, but certainly never thought I'd ever see the day where we'd be facing any such short calamity in my lifetime anyway. Um, well, here, here we are today. I don't know where we're headed. I don't know where we go from here. But I can just hear his words continue to echo in my head. Um, I, I know you'll find this part of the story interesting. Again, son of Greek immigrants, they, they didn't have any money. So he graduated from high school when he was 15. They moved him up a year. At some point, he skipped a grade. Then he went to uh, West Virginia University, and he didn't have enough money to go to school for four years. So, I mean, he, he literally worked uh, in pool halls uh, uh, cleaning up the joint and, and worked hour, uh, hours, uh, long hours into the night so he could finish his undergrad in three years. So now he's 18 years old when most of us are finishing high school, he's, and he's got a, uh, a degree. And he gets accepted to uh, University of Pennsylvania Medical School. And he graduates from there at the top of his class at the age of 22. 
He was thought to be, at the time, the youngest graduate of an American medical school in United States history. That would have been in 1939. Now, since then, you've got these child prodigies that uh, skip a whole bunch of grades and go on to college when they're 12 or 13. Well, you didn't have that in those days. So for somebody to have a medical degree at 22 is a um, pretty remarkable thing. Anyway, he was a pretty remarkable guy. Um, whatever good traits I have, I give he and my mom the credit for. Whatever bad traits I have, you just blame me, okay? Uh, because I, I, I was raised by two wonderful parents. Uh, I'm sitting here today, and I'm looking at this thing, and I'm thinking to myself, is this like a surreal experience? Is this like a bad dream? What are we going through here? Um, over the last week, they've fallen like dominoes, one after another. Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, AIG, Lehman Brothers, gone after 158 years off the face of the earth. Merrill Lynch, one foot over a cliff, one foot on a banana peel, gobbled up by Bank of America. Washington Mutual. Friday, the stocks of Washington Mutual lost 90% of their value. How much were they worth before Friday? Not much. Like, like two bucks, okay, after they'd been worth 30 or 40 bucks um, within the last year. They're worth 16 cents a share Friday when the FDIC seized their assets and then sold Washington Mutual's assets to J.P. Morgan Chase. Even locally, we've seen Amerabank become one of uh, more than a dozen banks now that have gone by the wayside this year and been taken over uh, by Citizens Bank. So if, if you haven't been following this story all day, this is mind-boggling where we're at. And, and I'll take you through this one step at a time. Stock spiraled downward as much as 705 points. The House defeated the bailout. The House of Representatives said no. Originally, it was 226 to 207 against. Before the dust cleared, it was 228 to 205. Two members of the House of Representatives, I believe one Republican and one Democrat, who had originally eh, hedged on whether they were going to vote one way or another on it, changed their votes in the end. First they said, okay, we'll vote for it. And then in the end they said, to hell with it. We're voting against it. Opponents said part of the reason for the opposition from Republicans was what they termed a partisan speech by House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. That's according to one GOP source. Quote, Pelosi's partisan speech has caused our members to go berserk and may cost us any remaining chance to pass the bill, the source said. Pelosi had said that Congress needed to pass the bill even though it was an outgrowth of the, quote, failed Bush economic policies of the last eight years. Now, you know, you would think at a time of crisis like this that we could all just be Americans for a day. One time that we could work together across the aisle to come to a consensus for the good of all Americans, for the common good of you, for the common good of all of our fellow citizens. No. Do you remember what I said Thursday, that we suffer from a sick mentality in this country? We do. We're sick. We're, we're not a healthy society mentally. There's a sick mentality that has poisoned this country. Both sides hope bad things will happen to the nation so they can ascend to power. It's all about power. It's all about control. It's all about greed. It's all about polarization. It's sick. And we are undermining ourselves from within. So instead of politicizing this thing today, they couldn't get together and somebody had to go shooting their mouths off and try to be a political opportunist. Now, I want to say this. First of all, I applaud the Republicans in the House of Representatives who said no to this damn thing. I applaud them. Here was the vote. And I'm going to explain why before, before this is all said and done. Because, you know, look. Everybody talks to me about being consistent. We're not going to be a socialized country. Um, we're going to go for free markets, free trade, free this, free everything. Fine and dandy. Okay? 